Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Manette Riordan painting in your PJs live with Manette on a Monday morning. Happy to be back with you all after a week away. It was a rough week last week of not feeling so great, and so I'm super, super happy, <coughs> excuse me, to be here with all of you today. Not 100% but uh, definitely starting to feel like a human being again. And this Wednesday, the 100-day project starts. And if you're not familiar with what the 100-day project is, it, this is the 10th year of an organized phenomenon where people pick a creative project and stick to it for 100 days. I haven't finished one yet, to be perfectly honest with you. And um, sometimes I picked projects that were too big and took too much time. Last year, I had a great project going and got a lot of the way through, but it was right in the middle of our big move. And so it felt like um, it became a distraction and not a support. And... Um, or another burden or stressor, which I did not need last year for sure. So this year, I picked a topic that I love. I picked something simple. I picked something that I could give away to other people, which would make me really happy. And so what I've decided to do this year for the 100-day project is to do 100 days of artsy animals. And you'll be able to follow along with me here on my YouTube channel or over on Instagram at Dr. Manette Riordan or 100 Days of Artsy Animals. So I love painting animals, but what am I going to do with 100 of them when I'm done? So I started thinking how fun it would be to really create something that um, I could give away and share with others. So for my 100-day project, I am going to be working on watercolor postcards and watercolor note cards. These were super inexpensive ones that I found on Amazon and ordered. And um, they have a really interesting texture to them. The paper is not too bad. You can't really, yeah, there you can kind of see all that texture on there. So it's interesting because I know I want to add a lot of Zen Tangle to them. And um, one of the ways to, <coughs> excuse me, help yourself through the 100-day project, and I'm going to suck on a cough candy. Hopefully it's not going to be too annoying while I'm talking. It might be. It might be annoying for me. We'll see. Um, is to prepare the backgrounds. And There are so many ways to prepare the backgrounds. Before I started feeling poorly, I did a whole batch that were coffee dyed, and I'll show those another day. But today I thought it would be fun to play with some acrylic inks and mark making tools of different kinds. So I love these Daler Rowney acrylic inks. So I have a variety of colors here. I have some fun mark making tools. I finally found what I was looking for, which was this sort of calligraphy or dip pen, which has nice tips on it. So I may not use that big old knitting needle. And I actually have a stick that I think my husband carved the, the tip for me here as well, and a little teeny tiny paintbrush. And I also have a spray bottle of water here that I'm going to play with. And I'm just going to create painty backgrounds and I'm going to make a mess. I also have a piece of paper set on the floor so that I can move them um, to the floor quickly to dry. And I'm going to work kind of on a batch of them at the same time. I love batch creating backgrounds. And I think I'm going to start with some of these postcards. I'm not sure where I'm going to go with the, the note cards yet. So maybe we'll get to those in a minute. But I want to start this morning with these painty backgrounds on these postcards. And so I'm just going to kind of spread them out. Let's see. It looks like we can see four on a screen at a time. Or what if we 
maybe turn them that way we can see them a little bit better awesome good morning good morning yes i'm super excited to be feeling like a human again it was a long week yes week and i'm very happy to be back <coughs> i'm not 100 percent as you can hear but happy to be back with all of you this morning and excited to be painting 100 days of artsy animals and i've already done some backgrounds when grab a sip of water that i've drawn some animals i've coffee dyed some so I'm already starting to gather and batch create. And for me, it's the secret to getting through the 100-day project. All right. Hopefully we'll get through this morning without a ton of coughing. <clears throat> I wasn't coughing when I got up. OK. I'm going to suck on a cough candy, so I may sound a little funny here for a bit. And Blanca, I hope you are doing well this morning. And I'm going to move some of these aside. So I have a few colors of the acrylic inks that I really, really love. I'm trying to get them so they're not stacked there behind my photograph. I caught the addiction for these particular colors from my friend Andrea Shebelu of a work of heart studio. And if you've never played with acrylic inks, they are a very thin, watery, but very vibrant form of acrylic ink. And they run a lot and they flow all over the page and they just make a glorious mess. So we're going to see what we can do this morning to just make a glorious mess. And these surfaces aren't very big, so it's not going to take a lot of paint. And then the other color that I love, just a bit cold. That's kind of crazy for L.A. even this time of year. It's been beautifully warm here the last couple of days, but we're having another huge cold snap and dump of snow coming. So after my class yesterday, I was really happy to be able to get outside for a little while. Okay, now the magic happens. So I'm going to take just a plain old spray bottle. And I'm going to start to spray these guys and just look at what that color does. And it just kind of flows like magic. You can allow the colors to blend, stay separate. This is definitely one of those messy, messy things. And then it can be fun to come in and just move that color around. Maybe make some marks. Where they blend together, I'm getting this beautiful green. Look, these two are buckling and sort of running together over here. So I'm just sort of letting them all do their own thing. And they're so fun to play with. And it definitely, like I said, makes a mess. You can also take a brush you know if you want a little more so maybe because I know I'm going to be doing other drawing and painting on top of these maybe I want to move that color around a little bit and then we're just going to call it done so what I love about this process is that we just want to move ourselves along right we want to move quickly not overthink things let the ink kind of work for us now i'm getting these nice beautiful smears i don't care if i'm getting ink on the back half the charm so this one feels like there's still lots of paint here so while it's still wet you know come in and move that color around add some of my favorite marks on here And these are just, um, I can get lost in the play. 
and then just moving things around, moving things around. What can I do with the color? How can I extend it and move it? So fun. And these cards are awesome. Um, they will be a little buckled probably when they're dry and so I will just stick them under a stack of books and I could come back in here with this one and maybe even add just a little more water maybe move that color around just a little bit more And I think giving ourselves just permission to play. So I don't know where I'm going with these. I don't know what that end product is going to look like. I love drawing with Posca's or black pens and adding Zentangle over the top of these. But these are the backgrounds for my 100 Days of Artsy Animals, my 100 Day Project. And so maybe animals will appear in the dots. Who knows? So I'm just going to keep moving through these pretty quickly. And at the end, we'll take a look at all of them. So noticing that only got some color in a few spots. So what happens if I just come in with maybe see if there's a little bit of color just left on my page down here. And I got a gorgeous green going on. I can add just maybe a touch more water and see what happens when I take this big stick in here so often we think that uh, we have to buy expensive tools but we were on a picnic one of my favorite places nearby called the Poudre Canyon sitting by a gorgeous river and Brad had a or Maggie, one of them, or both, had pocket knives and they were whittling sticks. And I said, can I have those sticks? Because I knew they would come back and, and be fun. Okay, all of a sudden I'm seeing come at, some kind of sea creature sort of evolving in here. Maybe a sea dragon or, you know, maybe there'll be a, a seahorse in this that this is feeling sort of very underwater-like in here. So just learning to have fun with these backgrounds is super fun. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about today was this idea of the 100-day project. What is it? Why does it matter? And should you undertake one? So I think, Blanca, you said you are 80 days in. You're almost complete with your own version of a 100-day project. And I'm just having some fun letting this paint move itself around the page so this one may be my favorite so far out of the four all right so I'm going to grab a couple more and I'm going to do a different color combo so I have never completed a hundred day project I said that at the very beginning of the video and I think in the past I picked projects that were too involved too big last year I had a great project but it coincided with us being in the middle of our move, which was, you know, the timing of all of that was really unpredictable. And so when the moving part of things got to be too much, I let go with a 100-day project. And it was a really good decision and a very intentional decision. But this year I have no excuses. And I knew I needed something that was simple, that had a theme, but that also would offer a lot of variety to keep me going. Because without a lot of variety, let's see if I got some of this. So this was one of, I love this gorgeous, I think this is a sepia. No, this is red earth. It's one of my favorites. And this is a dark marine blue. So still playing with those oranges and blues, but this is a completely different shades of oranges and blues. You can't even on the screen tell the difference until we add the water. And I'm wondering even, this one's super thick. 
So what happens if we do a little moving them around first and then spray them? Never tried that before. I love drawing spirals. So my friend Robin Marie Smith actually has a, and she's just Robin Marie on Instagram, she has a great planner for planning out your 100-day project. So why do a 100-day project? It's a great project to do if you want to get better at drawing, if you want to just be more committed and consistent to whatever creative practice. It could be photography, cooking, writing. There's no limit to what it could be. It's a great project if you want to get better at drawing faces. Do 100 days of faces. If you want to get over maybe some fear of visibility, you could do 100 days of selfies. I think the thing is to pick a project that you're not going to get bored with because as creatives what happens to so many of us is we get bored and we get ready to move on. Okay, let's see what happens now when we add water. I might lose a lot of those marks. Trying not to overdo it with water. I can always add more water, but it's hard to take the water away. So that's creating kind of an interesting effect. And I know that these colors will all soften a little bit once they're dry. So again, they're just super, super interesting backgrounds. And once they're completely dry and I have nice painty hands, then I will be able to paint over them. This might just become part of a background or I might even just some days collage an animal over the top. Like how simple can we make it, right? How simple can we make it? So I think, you know, the 100-day project, it's about variety. It's about simplicity but it's also about just committing to our own creative practice. Committing to our own creative practice. I love where these are going. They're getting um, interesting browns happening between those, but I'm thinking I want just a little more of that gorgeous marine blue to brighten these up a little bit. My brush is still kind of green from the other Get a little bit more of that blue just moving around in there. And right now I love it because these just look like a crazy mess. And I think when we start with a crazy mess, it helps us stay detached from any outcome. In my color-coded emotions class, I shared a quote yesterday from one of my favorite creative thought leaders and writers, Todd Henry the accidental creative about the importance of process and about how process is so much more important than product. It's where we actually create. It's where we do the work. It's where we learn and grow. It's where we make mistakes and experiment in that without having a love of process, we'll actually never get to product. We won't produce. Okay, I'm going to hit this with a dryer and come back over the top with some white and see what happens. So let me mute myself real quick and let's see what happens.
So these were really wet, so I ended up blotting them on my newsprint here. And it really softened the effect quite nicely. It was a fun thing to do to just turn them over and blot them. And now I'm going to have this really beautiful under paper happening here as well. And so now that I've got them dried and the colors all softened, I'm curious, do I want to add some more white? But let's just try. It may just disappear into the background. So this part of the creative process is where we learn, where we play. Oh, that's a great one, Blanca, but think about the, uh, you know, the size. Could you draw a whole body every day, right? Like, are you, you know, when you think about how much time you have, does that mean you're going to give yourself permission to some days you're, you know, just drawing heads, hands, hair, feet? Is it always going to be a whole body? So I love the idea, and I want you to think about could you do that every day for a hundred days? Do you have the, the time? What would you do it on? Like really think through by section. Brilliant. I love that. What a fun way to practice. Brilliant. And way more interesting than just doing faces, right? Is just giving yourself permission. So just adding some little pops of white. Not sure I'm even going to add water to these. And like I said, I'm feeling a little bit obsessed with spirals today. I'm going to add a pop of water and see what happens. And then I'm going to set these aside to dry. So these aren't done by any means, right? They're, they're just the, the baby beginnings here. And so I want to really encourage myself not to get attached, right? Like if I start getting attached to these under layers, then I'm not going to want to paint over them, right? So it's really important not to get attached. All right, that one, I'm going to let it sit just like it is. And I'm going to grab those first ones that we did. And as they are drying and flattening up, the colors just soften and they just feel like magic, right? They feel like magic. They're definitely not completely dry. This watercolor paper, it takes a lot of water, right? Because it's watercolor paper. So they're pretty soaked. So look how magical these are. I don't know, they're all feeling sort of oceany. So maybe I'll have a, you know, a series of four that are undersea creatures, maybe some fish and seahorses. I love seahorses. All right, where the other ones feel more mythical, so maybe they're going to call for some dragons. Okay, so I want to play with a couple of these note cards here. I'm going to work on them one at a time just because they're big. I'm not going to worry too much if that inside gets all messy. So when I'm doing note cards like this and the inside gets messy and I want to make it neat for writing, I would just trim a nice piece of paper and glue it to the inside of the card so that I would have a nice clean inside. Let's see what other colors we got here. So this is a processed magenta, which would also be pretty with that marine and turquoise blues. So let's start just with the magenta and see what that color does. Give it a chance to move and flow. I'm adding a little extra water in between so that I'm getting lots of flow all over the page. Moving that around. Making a happy mess. And so this time, rather than putting the dots down, I'm going to drop the next color right into that and see what happens. So you can already see it starting to bloom. This 
This is similar to working with watercolors. I've also got some echo line watercolors here that I want to play with. And these are kind of looking like crazy little eyes or something interesting. Again, it's all just a big happy experiment. And then you'll see me over the next few months as I'm working on the 100 day project, how I use these different backgrounds. So what happens if I mix that turquoise right in with that pink? Interesting, this one's a lot more flowy. Yes, magenta is the color of the year, which I am not sad about since it's a favorite. Okay, I'm going to do something really crazy here. I may end up with just a big ugly blob. Before I do that, I think I'm going to get all this extra water just out of the center there. But what happens if we do a little Rorschach experiment and we fold this backwards the other way? Interesting, interesting. So we got sort of a soft, kind of funky effect. Not exactly what I was expecting to happen, but I kind of like all these blooms of color. But we lost a lot of the texture and the marks, so let's see if we can't recreate that and it's all turning kind of an interesting shade of blue. I thought it would go more to purple but it actually ended up going more towards the blue. But this is going to make a really cool background. So what I'm seeing here already is a a little bit of a forest scene and some trees. So what if I wanted to bring even a little bit more of that back. I could take my dip pen and just go right into my color here. And maybe bring in some more of these sort of sketchy tree-like shapes. This marine blue is down to the very dregs at the end here. There we go. Now we got a nice bunch of it coming out of there. To create that kind of foresty look. So maybe we'll have a bear walking across the foreground of this picture. Again, it's all just interesting play, right? It's just interesting play. Letting it go, seeing what happens. Darken those up again. Let those magentas and blues kind of mix together. And what I'm noticing is that the way that I'm working on the card, if I were to close this like a card, it would actually have to go that way up. So what happens when that happens? I'm like, okay, well that's curious. So clearly those trees aren't gonna be there in that direction. So we're just gonna mess it all up again. But now I have some interesting darks and lights. I think I want a little bit more pink up here. So messy play, right? Today is all about messy play, backgrounds. I'm loving these droplets of water here. Paper towels are great with acrylic inks because they kind of come in and can sort of just create some of their own magical texture. Look at that wonderful texture that we got there. Okay, I'm going to set this one aside before I mess it up anymore. I'm happy with where it's at. 
And I think that's enough with the alcohol ink. So I'm going to switch gears. And so give me a second to clean up, put these back in their box. And next I'm going to work with some Derwent Ink Tense blocks, which are another fun tool for making backgrounds. They are a water soluble color stick. Let's see. Start with a mostly clean piece of paper here. If you've never worked with ink tents, they're one of my favorite tools. I'm going to grab my baby wipes here, get my fingers clean. What I love about these is that they dry permanent, right? They dry permanent, so they work like a water-soluble watercolor crayon, but when they dry, they're, they're permanent, and they come in blocks and in pencils, and they are so incredibly vibrant. I love the colors, and there's so many different things that you can do with them. They work great mixed with matte medium like I would with my watercolor crayons as well. Okay, so I'm a little bit cleaner. My surface is a little bit cleaner. I'm going to play with one of these. So first I'm just going to make some marks and put some, co some color down and show you kind of what they do. And then I'm going to play with some through stencils as well. So I haven't worked with any greens yet. So let's come in with just some maybe various shades of green and see what kind of a mess we can create. Because today I am all about the mess and play. After a week of being away from art, I didn't even, <coughs> excuse me, hardly color or draw. <coughs> Sorry. at all last week, although I did teach this weekend and was at least happy to be playing with some color. So there's a couple of ways that I could activate this. I could activate this just with a brush. Look at those gorgeous colors. I could spray it with the water bottle and see what happens. These colors blend beautifully together as well, helping me get some really different shades of green happening in here. So again, remember we're thinking messy, playful, we just want to be getting some color on the page because it gives us something to respond to. So I can look at those colors and say, okay, is there an animal in there somewhere? What animal might live in this environment? There's so many different ways that we could approach this idea of 100 days of artsy animals, but I know it helps if I just have something ready to go, right? Something ready to go. And what's cool about these is that you can keep some of the, the sketchy lines underneath. You can smooth them completely out. There's so many different ways I'm almost wanting these to just go a little bit more blobby, maybe not be quite so round. So I'm coming in with a lot of water and just letting them dissolve a little bit more. And this kind of creative play, just process work like this, allows us to really 
learn our materials, to play with color combos, to see what it is that we enjoy. And let's see, oh, that brightens that up a little bit. It's a little glary, but I think you get more of a sense. I can also dip these directly into water and color with them. This also allows me to explore the surface of this watercolor paper more. That's a new paper. It's very textured, so I'm going to have to learn to work with the, the texture. Really loving this bright. And because these are backgrounds, I want to get a fair amount of color on there. I don't need to color over every single inch. And I'm probably going to do a series of these backgrounds with just watercolor paints as well and create some nice blooms of watercolor. And I definitely will do some painty ones in all my favorite painty styles. We'll probably do painty backgrounds tomorrow. And then by Wednesday, it'll be ready to dive into animals. So if you're just joining me live, this is Dr. Manette Riordan with Painting in Your PJs, live with Manette. And I am prepping painty, messy backgrounds with Derwent Inktense pencils. We also played with some acrylic inks. And I am getting ready for the start of the 100-day project, which starts on Wednesday. The 100-day project is literally what it says. You choose a creative project any creative project and commit to doing it for 100 days and the trick one trick is preparing another trick is to sort of keep it small and doable so i'm doing 100 days of artsy animals and i want to be able to have backgrounds ready to go so that i'm just focused on the animals so i'm just focused on the animals okay this one's kind of fun kind of interesting so you know i'm thinking about it if this might be the cover or what happens if this is the cover so this one looks more landscapey you know this one looks kind of garden like so i could see having you know a blooming garden drawn in black over the top with some fun little critters hidden in the spaces so already, just in these simple painting backgrounds, I begin to see some of the, the things that I can start to create. This one just needs a little more variety in here. It just has that kind of one big image in the background. So this page is very wet, so I'm drawing right into the wet on that page. I need to just mess it up a little bit more. And this is that, you know, I thought I was done and I don't want to spend too much time getting, <clears throat> excuse me, attached to my backgrounds either. But it needed that little pop of that green. Okay, we're going to call that one done. I have a nice pile of things happening over here on the floor beside me. So with this one... Yeah, they're, they're really fun to play with. They're not inexpensive, but they do last forever. So another fun thing that you can do with these is to use them with stencils. And so I have this nice set of floral stencils here. Let's see what happens if we just do some roses. So I'm going to come in with a makeup sponge. And I'm going to get my makeup sponge nice and damp. And I'm just going to take it. I'm going to take that out of there so I don't get all the other colors too. You can see I've done that with this one. And I'm just going to rub my makeup sponge right over the top of that. Whole stick. And it's going to get this beautiful wash of color on here. And create this really lovely rose. So I think we're going to do a background of roses here. So a little more water. These makeup sponges don't last forever when you get them wet. They tend to get uh, really puffy and start to expand. 
So you might find you end up having to change them quite a bit. Also, if your stencil starts to get, see how much messier that one is than that one, it's because it got really wet. So you gotta pay attention to the amount of water that you're using. And also pay attention to how much pigment you're using. You can vary the color by how dense your pigment is. So I'm just blotting that off in between to try to keep that a little bit cleaner. Let's see, let's take that one over here. So we got that one just a little bit more vibrant. And all of a sudden we have this very fast, simple, stenciled background, right? This very fast stenciled background. So again, remembering things don't have to be complicated. So this one is like screaming out to me to have some butterflies. So maybe we'll have some butterflies playing in our roses. So I'm getting all kinds of interesting textures happening. Okay, and I think we need some, another makeup sponge. And I'm gonna stick some green leaves in here. Get a little bit of bright green going. I'm in love with this particular green today. And I do love the pencils. The pencils are great. You can actually use these on fabric and then iron over them and they will um, be permanent once they're dry. It's another great use for the ink tents is on fabric. So it was just what it needed was that little bit of pop of green. Doesn't need a lot. It's a great product. They do sell them in um, a pan form like watercolors, but I did not like them. I didn't think the colors were as vibrant. So I recommend the sticks like these or the pencils. Okay, so now I've worked on this as a whole, but this is gonna get folded as a note card and sent to someone. So I definitely thinking this is gonna be up, but I want a couple more, <coughs> excuse me, sprigs of that green in here. So I think make this feel just a little bit finished. And I'm trying to move that stencil around. I'm not using the whole stencil, but just, you know, some pops of it, get it going in some different directions. Just create that little bit of interest and in not so everything's all seam. And look at that simple, elegant background. So this could be sent exactly as is with nothing else done to it. But because my 100 days of artsy animals is about animals, I'll be tucking some animals in here. But look at how fast and easy it was to just create this beautiful, simple background. And these don't take as long to dry because they're not as wet either. So I also grabbed a couple of other just bigger stencils that have, well, I grabbed a bunch of flowers because I loved flowers, but I love this particular shape also. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is 10 backgrounds, right, already that I've created. So 10 days of my 100-day project that are already begun, already begun. Okay, so trying to decide if I want to keep with that same color combo or go with something different. I think I'm going to keep with the same one just because I already have these nice wet makeup sponges here. 
my cat is going bonkers in the background talking to himself. I don't think he's talking to me. He has this very curious meow that I it's like he's saying, why? Why? All right, and let's get a little of that green in there. We'll get some nice, maybe a little bit of brown or darker, maybe even a little orange. What happens when we sort of mix those two, that green and pink mixed together. And we have this beautiful painty background, which I love. And I even kind of love having the frame on it. So I'm wondering, do I want to continue the pattern? Or do I want to leave it? Great question. Part of me likes things that are finished and wants to just maybe even just pull a little bit more color here. So what if I didn't have it be a pattern, but we just let that color flow out? That feels more finished. Feels more finished for sure. You see this one, we got a lot of green on the bottom and a lot more pink along the top. And look how much pigment is still in that little makeup sponge. You can see it's getting all puffy. It's not going to last too much longer. It'll start to disintegrate here pretty quickly. But another just super, super simple background. So um, love the, the difference in how this looks between the grab one of these. So, you know, the Derwents and the Inktense, this one ended up having all these beautiful scratchy marks in it that I love right around the, the edges, but the, the colors, they do completely different things. And so this play and process around just really experimenting with our materials and our tools is so, so important to do. Okay, I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to call it quits for today. And of course, it wouldn't be a Manette project if it didn't have some sacred circle designs in it. This is actually a gorgeous stencil created by someone else available with through Stencil Girl products, and it's a whole set of mandala stencils related to the chakras. So I think I want to look at this one. What if we did it this way? So we're not going to fit the whole design on there, which is fine. So I'm being a little more intentional with this one. And let's see what we can make happen. Hmm, feeling drawn to this color, and I don't even know necessarily what that color is. It's kind of an orangey, sort of sepia. I kind of like that, so let's give that one a try. Again, dipping my makeup sponge in water and just rolling it all over the top of that. Try not to get it too wet because I do want to keep that beautiful detail that she has in here. All right, so let's see how we did. A little messy, right? That water definitely seeped under. But again, this is a background, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. I think I am going to come in with this color here and just put that out around the background. Excuse me. But it feels like it needs some other color on here as well, even for a background. So another thing that we can do with these is just to come in with a wet paintbrush 
and just use our brush right on the top. Again, blues and oranges are one of my favorite complementary color combos. So maybe I just come in with a little bit of messy. If we're going to have it be messy, let's keep it messy. If I have it be messy, I'm not attached, right? I'm not attached. If it gets too perfect, I get too attached. And then if I wanted just a little bit of that blue to flow into my background. Again, it's a background, and if I end up not liking it, guess what? Everything is paint over. I can just come back in with some white paint. I'm wondering if we can get some of our nice white spots going in here. And just change that a bit. Let that sit for a second. And I could play like this for hours and hours. In fact, I often do. I will often sit and play. Oh, I haven't um, done any of the Echo Line watercolors. Maybe I'll do a couple of those before I'm done with this session, too. And you can see what happened to, the, to these guys. This is the, the normal size, right? And they, so they, they swell up and they don't seem to dry back into shape very well. Okay, let's see. So I didn't get any of those nice spots on there that I was kind of going for. Maybe I could have waited a little bit longer, but we did get some just interesting... We have a messy mandala to start with, so it just makes an interesting background to start with. So on this one, I've left that back white, and I'm going to leave it white for right now and see where I get to. Okay, one more set of backgrounds, and I will have a huge set of painty backgrounds ready to go for my 100-day project. And I am planning, I'm going to try on this smooth side this time instead of this rough side and see what happens. I'm going to have plenty of backgrounds to respond to for my artsy animals. And I'm planning on, and let's see, I'm going to start wet on wet this time. And I am going to play with some Echoline watercolors. Um, but I'm planning on using paint, collage, fabric, some slow stitching. Let's try some purples. So these are liquid watercolors. They're similar to the acrylic inks, but they are a watercolor. They don't dry permanent. Some, oh, there we go. Nice bloom going that time. So they act similarly to the acrylic inks, but they are a watercolor. All right, so more water is what's needed. And even though it says it's, you know, felt smooth to the touch on this side, what I'm noticing is that I'm still getting the, the touch in there. So I went with a pink and a purple. Feels kind of Easter. -y. I don't know why pink and purple feels kind of Easter. -y. So we're getting a very similar effect that we did to the acrylic inks when I started this way, kind of wet on wet. And I don't know that I want more of those sort of painty ones like that. So I'm going to just come in and create some watercolor brushes on here. I'm not going to worry too much about the color. All right. What I don't have over here is my paper towel. So already it's pretty by itself. If I let this dry exactly as it is, it would just be a beautiful, soft, pastel ground that I could draw over. Sometimes we can come in and remove paint 
No, it did not work that time. I think it's uh, it's probably still too wet, but just putting this stencil on there, I got some some cool texture. So again, sometimes experiments work, sometimes they don't. It's fun to remove paint through a stencil with acrylics. I don't think I've ever tried it with watercolor before. One worked a little better, a little more interesting there. So maybe I'll try that big flower up here again. And I've got now maybe a little bit less water on the cage than before. It worked better where that color was darker and more vibrant. You can just kind of barely see it there. But at least it added just a little more interest to that page. All right, I'm just sort of blotting off my stencil. But whatever happens, I'm going to have this really pretty pastel -y color here. And then just let those colors run a little bit more. All right. So the stencil, as it's drying, you can see it definitely took some of that paint away and created, again, just that really fun effect. I'm running out of room to put all my things to dry. Okay, this is my problem, is that once I get started playing with this stuff, then, like, I find it so hard to stop. Okay, so this time I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint, and you're not going to be able to see this yet. I'm putting just some big circles of water on the page. We'll just start on the front half putting lots of water on there. You can kind of see because my water is not super clean. And you're going to watch these, what happens when we get some of these circles start to bleed together a little bit. And this works differently on different papers as well. So, you know, it's interesting just watching what's happening. This paper seems to be very thirsty, so it's soaking up the water really fast. So I'm going to definitely come in with some more water. Look at that gorgeous yellow. So what if I just put a little of that in there? Interesting. Again, just so much of this. Okay, and I really want these here to touch. I can just pull those together and that then will start to flow a little bit differently between the circles. And I can come in with one more circle here and just see how those colors all can start to play and flow together. And when they dry, they really are quite magical. They're great for adding zentangle patterns, too. So maybe inside each of these will be some little animal drawings. What I don't know have on here is nearly enough of the blue, for sure. So let's come back over here and add a little bit more of that blue to the green, just letting them all flow and play. If I just touch those together, then that yellow is going to run. And it's amazing how it's already dry in some places. And I can also just go in with this water really and dense. And so remember, this does not dry permanent. So if I were to come back later and add water to this, then it would reactivate and take the color away again. <clears throat> I can just continue to pull that color. Add some patterns.
love the way the colors are blending and flowing together. And I can do this same process with the alcohol inks as well, just adding those, working in the circles this way. All right, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this side. Do I want to? I don't know, that's kind of fun, just to have that little touch over there. We'll let some of that color just flow. Very nice. Awesome, just letting the color do the work for me. And there we have our final painty background. So in one hour, and I could have done all of this with one supply, with multiple supplies. So we created these crazy painty guys. Those were with the acrylic inks. These also were with the acrylic inks. This one's still wet, so I don't want to mess that one up. We had this was the acrylic inks, and the Derwents we played with, and the Echo Lines. Look at as that dries, just that yummy, yummy, rich color. We played with some sketchiness with the Derwents as well as some stencils with the Derwents. So amazing how much I was able to create. And so this kind of process painting like this, not only is it a ton of fun, but it leaves you with a ton of things to <clears throat> work with and respond to later. And no two of them are the same, even though some of them are similar. It's just given us a lot of opportunity and places to respond to. So this is Dr. Minette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Minette. I will be right back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. That's 8 a.m. Pacific and um, 9 a.m. Eastern. Thank you so much for joining me, Blanca, as always. Thank you for being here with me. I am so happy to be back live this week where we're going to be talking about the 100-day project. Tomorrow I'll be doing more painty backgrounds, but we're going to go back to my beloved acrylics tomorrow. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and thank you for joining me today. I'll see you soon.